Now, chances are, if you've seen me before, you've probably seen me from those Lightroom tutorials that you get on your free page. Those videos in which where I show you how to make your photos look like different pieces of media through an app called Lightroom. And one of the most common questions I get is, what app is this? What app can I use? And how can I use these effects, you know, with the actual app that I'm using? And Lightroom has so much of this mystery surrounding it because it's such a big application. It's used in so many different types of media and so many people talk about it, but how the hell do you actually use it? And that's why today I'm giving you the de facto answer, no more comments, no more questions, how to use Lightroom for your photos. This video is gonna be a long one. It's gonna show you everything that I know in Lightroom throughout all different parts and all different settings. So if you know one setting really well, but you don't know the other, this video is perfect for you because you can just find the exact setting in the timestamps below. I'm gonna be using Lightroom Classic for this video. Honestly, all the settings will apply here. You can use Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom for iPad, anything that you need to, and it'll all work the same way. As always, my presets and my other videos will be all in the description if you'd like to see more, but I don't wanna waste your time any more than I need to, so let's just get into it. Now, when you open up Lightroom, it is going to be a lot. There's a lot of settings, a lot of different interfaces, and a lot of things that you're not gonna understand at first, and that's okay. As someone who's been editing for three years, half of the stuff still confuses me, but that doesn't matter because we're only gonna be talking about what you need to know and what is gonna make it easiest for you to edit your photos. Now, let's start simple. Go up to the top and click File, then Import Photos and Video. From there, you're gonna find a bunch of different text, but that doesn't matter. Just go to your left, go to whatever device you're using, and then find the exact place that you have your photos. Now, once you're here, you'll see any photos. If you put them in a folder, if they're in your SD card, you'll find them all here. And then from there, all you have to do is just check them all and click import. Once you've imported them, it'll take you to the library tab. And now these tabs can get super confusing as well, but it's really, really simple. Library is for looking, develop is for editing, and map, book, slideshow, print are all for organization. If you want to have your photos organized by um, where they are in the world, if you want to have it be in a book style, if you want to have them be in a slideshow, these are all just bonus options you can have to make that a lot easier. But fundamentally, you just want to know how to import photos, so all you need to do is just click import photos, select your photos, import, and then go over to develop. Now the big part, the actual editing of the photo. You're going to find a bunch of these drop downs on the right of your screen below the histogram, and on mobile it should just be the same thing but in kind of more segregated tabs. And these are all your different settings. And this is what we're gonna be talking about today in this video. Now, let's start basic. The things that you probably already know, but I'm gonna tell you anyways because you need to know these things. Under the basic tab, you'll find your most important settings. The stuff like your white balance and your exposure and how these can change your photos. The white balance is pretty simple. Your white balance is the mixture of color in your image and the balance of white. So, for example, if you have a very warm picture, you can move it to be more warm on the right or much cooler on the left. And tint goes the same way, but with green and pink tones. Now, if you just want to fix your photo's white balance and not do anything else, you can click this little tab here and then click on the whitest area of your image and it should fix it to a degree. But this is not going to be always accurate, so I find learning this and trying to adjust with it per your image is really helpful. Not only that, these can be used super artistically in ways of making photos a lot more colorful and a lot more artistic in ways that the photo doesn't always look. Say I want to have this photo look warmer, a lot more summer-ish and kind of golden hour, I can always move this to the right and that'll just enhance it without me having to do anything else. Now from there you have your tone settings. Now these settings are for everything that's related to the light in the image. There are six categories. There's your exposure, which is your overall brightness of the image. This is used to brighten the entire image as one. So if you don't want to have anything separated between the darks and the lights, and you just want to brighten it all together, exposure is what you want. In contrast is how big of a difference the lights and the blacks are in an image. So if I want my image to look really flat and level, I can always move it to the left. But if I want to have, it, have that really intense high dynamic range, you can always move to the right. And then you have the much more specific areas of lighting. Stuff like your highlights, your shadows, your whites, and your blacks. And these are super important. I cannot stress that enough. A lot of people think you can just use the exposure tab for everything in your image, but if you use these properly, you can have such good lighting and it's so simple. So your highlights are your highlights, the highest parts of your image and in the histogram are on the right. So lowering these will make your stuff like your sky, your heavy whites a lot darker. And this is great for stuff like the sky, skin, anything that has a very washed out white look can bring it back really easily, especially if you shoot raw. Always shoot raw. That is, take anything away from this video, shoot raw, this is so, it's so useful. And on the vice versa of that, the shadows are the darker parts of your image. Stuff like your blacks, your shadows, your poorly illuminated things, you can bring those back by bringing up the shadows. And if you look at the difference between something that has highlights at negative 100 and shadows at 100, it is a 
colossal difference. It is almost insane how much you can bring back if you use a raw file and you edit it like this. And lastly, you have your whites and blacks. And these are basically the more extreme, more direct parts of your image that are white and black. These usually come last in my editing process, but they are super important still, and stuff like upping the whites can bring you such a nice dynamic range overall in your picture. So I never neglect these, always use them, but you know, just be conservative because they are a lot more extreme. Next up, we have clarity, dehaze, and texture under the presence tab. And oh my God, guys, do not overuse these. Please, this is the biggest thing I'm gonna tell you right now. Do not overuse these. Every photographer you're gonna meet and I'm gonna to talk to is gonna say that they overuse clarity so much when they first started out, and it's so easy to see why, because the results are so direct. But please do not do this, guys. It is so unnatural, and ultimately it will make your photos age way worse. I learned this the hard way, and you guys didn't have to either, so take this with a grain of salt. But let's get into it. Pretty simple, texture makes your image have a lot more texture in terms of the details. If you zoom in, it's a lot more apparent. You can see stuff like rocks. The difference is way bigger if you add them and remove them. And clarity, much like the other settings before, is just a more direct and useful version of texture. So if you wanna add more clarity to your image, you up it, and if you wanna have it be a lot more flat and smooth, you can lower it. And these are very seldom, but very specific and helpful uses. So let's just say you're taking a picture of a car or an urban landscape, something with a lot of defined edges and shadows, the clarity will be very nice because it'll bring out those details and it'll make it look a lot more sharp. But let's just say you're taking a picture of something at night, like a street photography or rain, um, clarity can be super nice because it gives you that nice kind of dreamy feel you get from mist filters. I got a big video talking about how to make your photos look a lot more dreamy using the slider and a lot of other things that I'll get into very soon, but let's just keep moving. And of course you have dehaze, and dehaze is basically to remove haze and add haze to your image. Say if you have fog or you wanna add fog, you can lower it and make it look foggy, or you can up it and make it look really intense. Again, don't overuse this. Please, I did it too, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. And then we have the god tier of the starting out editing sliders, the saturation and vibrance. Guys, it's so easy to just take the slider and just go, but please, for all of the Instagram users, all the people who are looking at your photos, don't do this. Listen, I'm guilty. I love extravagant colors. Things that make my photos look like they're made in freaking Willy Wonka's world are my favorite. But this is not how you do it all the time by just cranking it all the way up. Knowing how to use these effectively will put you beyond so many starting out photographers because so many people just love to crank that bad boy up. But if you know how to use it, it can be one of the most helpful tools in Lightroom. Now, what is the difference between vibrance and saturation? It's not a ton, but I'm still gonna tell you anyways. So in a nutshell, the vibrance targets the much more strong and much more focused colors in the image while saturation covers everything, much like exposure versus something like highlights and shadows. The best way I can show you is taking this image and putting the saturation all the way down. If I change the vibrance at all, nothing will change. But if I go over to the vibrance and put it now into 100, if I saturate it, you can see exactly what colors come back and which colors are your focus point. And if you saturate one or the other, it can give you different results. Next, we have the tone curve. And you guys are very confused about this. I've gotten a lot of comments about it, a lot of things saying, what the hell is that? How do I even find that thing? But trust me, it's not as hard as it looks. Um, and it can be really helpful if you wanna make your images a lot more dynamic. So let's get into it. Basically, the tone curve is editing your photo's light a lot more directly. As you can see that black shadow behind the line, that is your photo's histogram. That's your photo's desperation of light, of darkness, and how it separates in your photo. For example, in this photo, the photo is exposed to the right and there's a lot more highlights than there is shadows and you can use this to your advantage. And now through adding points, you can change your photo's light directly from where it is in the histogram, with the top being the highlights and the bottom being the shadows. You can go absolutely absurd with this, which I do not recommend again. Please don't do this, but it's completely up to you. Lighting is just your own palette. You can do whatever you want. You are a god of the light. No. Do whatever you want with it. I like lifting up the shadows a lot of the time to give it kind of a matte look and lowering the highlights, but then again, it is completely up to your style. Just go into Lightroom and mess with it, and that's the best way you can learn it, honestly. And then you have your color tone curves, which is the same thing as your light tone curves, but just with color, and it's a lot more complicated. It's basically editing the colors of your photo in the same way you edit the light in your photo with the tone curve, and that makes probably not a lot of sense, but we're gonna skim over that one because honestly, I think it's better for another video, and it's used a lot more seldom in what you wanna do, so 
I think it's gonna be a waste of time talking about it for too long. So let's get into the next part. You then have the color mixer and point color. And the point color is a really new feature that I absolutely love that we'll get into, but just talking about the HSL, it's again, very specific and very useful. It's all about the direct colors in your image. If your image is say of a fall landscape, you'll have a lot of red, oranges, and yellows. And this way you can directly edit them to change the colors. Let's just say I want to change the green and this to be a lot more saturated, darker, and a lot more yellow. I can go over to the HSL, go over to the green, make it a lot more yellow, then go over to the saturation, and I can up it to my will as I want. Now this does not look very good, but you can use it in a way that looks really good, and I love this feature. This portion of the editing takes up a beefy time of my preset videos, and that's honestly the part that people don't really understand the most, but once you start getting used to it and start using presets and start developing your styles, it can make your photo look like this to this. Like seriously, this I, I removed the features from this one and it was literally, that's that's a difference. But lucky for you guys, Lightroom realized this year that this feature is so complicated that they added the point color feature, which I love. All you need to do is grab this pointer, pick the color you want to edit, and then from there you basically get a minimized version of every single feature that you found before just for that specific color. If I want to make the sky more teal, you can just move it to make it more teal. If you want to make it more saturated, you can make it more saturated. And it's so much easier to use. The best way I learned about this without any videos was just going outside, taking pictures, and just sliding all these around until they looked cool. And that can take time, it can be kind of hard, but trust me that's the best way you're going to learn it and it's going to be so helpful in the future. So I cannot recommend using this one. It's so good, it's so good. Okay, let's keep going. Let's talk about the color grading tab because this is such a useful feature that you probably hear all the time in terms of people talking about movies and photos. It's the main term of color grading. This is simple. You basically take the areas that we talked about before with the highlights, the shadows, and the midtones, and you edit the colors. You color grade them. That's why, they, that's why they call it that. Using the color wheels, you can see exactly how much you can change by just moving this around. Let's just say I wanna make this image a lot more moody and dark. I can just move this down to the blues and then move the midtones to the blues. And that simple, it looks like a completely different image. And I didn't even do anything else in this picture. So it's really important. A lot of starting out photographers think they can just get away with the temperature slider and saturation, but guys, this is so useful. It makes your images look so much cooler and you literally have to do like nothing to do it. So. I'm telling you guys, you guys, you watching this? This is this is this is the pro tip, guys. You should you should definitely use this one. Now open up that detail tab and let's look at sharpening and noise reduction because guys, we're living in 2024 now. This is being posted. Uh, Happy New Year's. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And this is a crazy new time. Now back in my day, as I'm obviously a very old citizen, we had to use this thing called luminance denoise, and it was not great. It's useful in very particular ways, but if you want to crank it all the way up, it makes your image look like a freaking Picasso painting, which is cool, but not that cool, and you want to make it a lot better. But you're living now where robots and R2-D2 and talking planktons exist, and you can use freaking AI, and that's what we're going to do. Now let's take an image like this that looks like it was taken on a lemon and has so much noise. All you need to do is go over to AI Denoise, select the amount that you want to do it with, and then just click Enhance, and you wait. Guys, guys, this is freaking ridiculous. I, I'm, as someone who used crop sensor for my entire life, this is ridiculous. And you guys have to try this. So I'm not even, I'm not even plugging it. I'm just like, but beyond the tomfoolery, let's get into the actual settings, which is your sharpness and your color denoising. Sharpening is a beast that we all talk about, we all know about, it's on every phone, it's on every social media, and it's basically just how much we sharpen our images before we post them out. If you wanna make your image a lot more sharp, but a lot more kind of pixelated, you can up the sharpness here and you can see the big difference. But ultimately, you don't wanna blast your sharpness. I think it kind of gives you a nice level when it just does it by default, but again, if you wanna mess with the masking, you wanna mess with the radius, detail, amount, it's all there and it's all very useful for specific uses. And if the AI denoise did not do everything you wanted it to do, um, you have your luminance to noise reduction and your color noise reduction. Uh, this basically just does what exactly what you can see on screen now, um, just, makes it less noisy, less color noise, everything looks a lot more even, and especially at night, this can be super helpful. Now let's quickly talk about lens blur. This is a new feature in Lightroom that is so cool, and it basically makes it so you can have any type of aperture you want in Lightroom. Let's go back to this photo. Now this photo was shot on a f4.0 lens, and it does not have a lot of aperture in it and a lot of bokeh, but if we just go over to that lens tab, click apply and wait, you can see immediately it gives it much more sense of depth, and you can make that a lot more. You can go all the way with this. If you wanna make it look like it's completely blurred, you can. If it looks like it's completely out of focus, you can do what you want. It's an early access, it's not perfect, but honestly, it's so much fun to use and give it a shot if you haven't. So let's just keep moving. Now there's one thing that all the editors watching this are absolutely screaming at that I have not mentioned, which is masking. 
My asking is complex, it's hard to understand, but it's so useful, it's insane. So let's get into it. Going over to the right circle underneath your histogram, you can find all the different types of masking. Now, again, we live in a world of AI, which is crazy, but now you have options like subject, sky, and even people if you wanna go into that. If I wanna select this person and edit something like their hair, their eyebrows, their skin, I can do that throughout this, and it's absolutely insane, but it's such a cool feature. There's an ambulance beside my building. I do not know what's happening. It's probably to do with the Lightroom sliders. I don't know. Don't do whatever I'm doing here though. That's that's not good. Using all the different types of masking can make your image look way more dynamic and way more intense. And that is so cool. Something like the radio gradient can be used to make like a fake light source. If you wanna make like a fake sun, a fake sunset or anything like that, you can use this. Your brush and object selection can give you a much more direct and drawn out way of using your light. If you wanna make, you know, something like the sky a lot brighter or, you know, the ocean. And if you wanna be a lot more direct, you can use things like your subject mask, your sky mask, your background mask. All these things would directly edit small areas of your photo, like your sky, like your person, like your freaking cat. It's so cool. And since this video is getting really long and you know, everything over seven minutes is kind of a draw, let's talk about the last little things you should know. Under effects, you have stuff like your vignette, which is basically a way of making your image a lot more direct and almost have a black frame around it. It can make your images a lot more intense or it can bring back stuff like lens corrections, which we're gonna get into next. And the same thing goes for grain. Grain is for if you wanna have your image have a kind of vintage feel, you wanna have it be kind of retro, you can use this to add a bit of manufactured grain. But why would you do that? Trust me, you will. You will know how it feels. Ask like every vintage and night photographer. We love this thing. Your lens corrections are ways you can fix little errors and details with your lens. Stuff like your distortion, how it warps your pictures or how it adds a little bit of vignetting that you don't want. Go over here, enable profile corrections and it should just figure out what lens you have and fix them to exactly how they should be fixed. If you wanna crop your image straight through Lightroom, you can just use this crop tool and basically make it however you want. You'll have all your different types of aspect ratios. If you wanna have it be one by one for a profile picture, four by three for an Instagram post, it has all of them. And lastly, we have your calibration. Now, we're not gonna get fully into these because these don't make any sense. They do make sense, but they don't. So basically, they're ways of calibrating the color in your image in a much more direct way, but like not in the same way as the tone curve, if that makes any sense. It, it, does, it does. I make a separate video on these as well with maybe the tone curve if you guys wanna see that, but either way, they're, they're cool. You can mess with them, you can see the differences. It basically makes your images a lot more green and a lot more orange or wherever in specific areas, but We'll go past that for now. Now, all these settings that we talked about today can be saved and used on different pictures for later in things called presets. That's, that's my thing, I, I like presets. If you made a preset, say, from a winter photo and you wanna apply it on a summer photo, don't know why you do that, but you can do that because you have all those options in your presets. I have presets in the description below. If you wanna use those, I like those. I use them on everything. You don't have to. I like them. They're pretty freaking cool. Okay, let's keep going. And when you finally have that beautiful image, that monstrosity, I mean masterpiece that you've made this entire video, you can go to the top, file, and then you just click export. There's a lot of different settings here. If you wanna have your files have a different name, if you wanna have them export with a certain preset, you wanna have different metadata, like your website or your name. If you just wanna have your photo be basic and not have any extreme changes, just go over, down, make sure your photo is on JPEG at max quality, and then click export. And you're done. That's it. You just edited a photo, fully in Lightroom. Guys, see how hard, that was so easy. That was so easy, right? That was so easy. I honestly cannot stress enough how important Lightroom is. It is the biggest thing that has been for my photos, for my style, for everything that I do in photography. It all starts in this program. It's hard, it's weird, it's completely different, and it's so much easier just to edit it on your phone. But guys, I promise you, this is a big game changer, and it is such an important step in making your photos look amazing. You're gonna have a few months where photos are not gonna look the way you want. They're not gonna get the same editing and the strong styles, and I even have styles that I'm so envious of. But trust me guys, this is gonna be the biggest difference in your photos, and I absolutely recommend you install this as soon as you can. And hey, it's completely free on mobile, so just go for it. If you wanna see how I use these settings and these different elements in my photos, um, all my pictures are on Instagram and all my editing tutorials. And I also have some presets in the description below where I show off directly how I use them. And you can use uh, this code for 20% off because I love you guys. All right, it's been about an hour of me yapping on my recording thing and that is so much, but I really wanna give you guys a rundown of everything in Lightroom and I can't believe you made it all the way to the end of the video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys all. I can't wait to make more YouTube videos in the new year and I promise I will not always make them this long. So thank you guys so much for watching. It's photography, I'll see you later.